Welcome to Strange Stories with the Seeker and the Skeptic. This week, my friend Meg and I are doing something special. We are going to be doing a three-part series about what it means to be a witch. We both identify as witches, but what I think we're going to see with this conversation is that our relationship with being a witch and our practices are a little bit different, which I think is totally cool and okay. So when I first did a Google search for what does it mean to be a witch, the first two answers that came up on my phone were pretty interesting. So the first thing that showed up on my phone from the Merriam-Webster dictionary definition of a witch is a witch is a person, especially a woman, who is credited with having usually malignant supernatural powers. So that was the first one. And then the second one was the term witch has multiple meanings, including a practitioner of witchcraft. A witch is someone who practices witchcraft which is the use of supernatural or occult powers to cause harm to others. So Meg, what do you think about those two definitions? Oh, I think it really resonates um, sort of the historical villainization of the feminine. Um, Mm -hmm. And I don't even mean that to just be gender specific, like just feminine oppressed folks who don't really have power, but are threatening because they know things and they they're able to manifest or heal or nurture in a way that those in power couldn't. Mm -hmm. Um, So I I do really think that it's kind of that archetype of villainization and what women were up against in that oppression when they sought to only help and heal and, you know, support others. Yeah. I think it's crazy because it's like the witch trials and what some call like the burning times. This is, we're talking like the 1500s dating back to that. We're in 2024. Yeah. And that is still how witches and witchcraft is being viewed. And I, I think you're right in terms of, yes, there were some men who were killed, but like the, it was 80% women. Yeah during that time who were, you know, tried and, you know, hung or burned for being witches. And it just, you know, it's like they were used as scapegoats for anything that was going wrong during that time. Absolutely. And, you know, within all of those assumptions then and how they carry over now, it builds a sense of hierarchy of, Mm -hmm. you know, I mentioned the word power, obviously it's power, but it's also that feeling of at what point do we acknowledge that we can't have male without female, we can't have power without empowering people, you know, and Mm -hmm. even leadership, what we're seeing, you know, it's like, okay, this is something that really has been oppressed and really toted for a very long time hundreds and thousands of years yeah yeah and I feel like we still see that I mean obviously like those google searches those are the first things that come up when you search what does it mean to be a witch but we're still seeing that in popular culture you know there's a a lot of and, and there's shows that I enjoy but they still have this kind of negative portrayal of witches and, you know, working like um, the chilling tales of Sabrina. Right. I, I enjoyed that show, but it's like, you know, they're making a, you know, a covenant with the devil, the dark Lord, you know, the horned God. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. All with that really represented back. Yeah. No. Yeah. So how would you describe for you, like what it means to be a witch? Okay. I, I do feel like it, it really means communing with nature, being in a position where you can see even scientifically where energy comes from, what our source energy is um, leaning into the spiritual side of being a witch. I feel like it it's connection to all things. It's, working through love and light it's letting go of heavy or negative thinking it's being in a position where you're 
not necessarily subscribing to dogma or to what was before, you know, mm-hmm. or, or what we've been conditioned to believe in our society. Mm-hmm. I think it is preserving nature and protecting nature and being grateful for the things that nature gives us because Mm -hmm. that is where our sustenance comes from. It's our very air we breathe, all the things that all the elements that we, we, you know, need in order to survive. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, it just made it, I feel more at peace when I'm able to tap into that mindset through natural sources um, as opposed to sitting in a church pew and um, honoring something that might not even be secular and, and, or it's non-secular it's, it's not spiritual sometimes. And I think that's been a confusion that a lot of us have had growing up in our normal society, if you will, or, you know, the social norms that are there, it gets really confusing because we see a lot of contradiction. So, yeah. So I feel like it's balance, it's harmony. Pagan traditions are more embracing, more accepting of other beliefs. Whereas a lot of Christian beliefs are, if you don't, worship what I worship, or you don't necessarily worship the way I worship, then you're excluded or something mm-hmm. bad happened to you, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I love what you said about like, just being like in tune with nature and connected with nature. Um, We did ask people to kind of send in like their points of view about what it means to be a witch. And a lot of them had talked about that. Um, one person, Tony, who's a DDPY friend, he said, it is an appreciation for the cycles of change that nature goes through throughout the year and how it that affects our life to be in tune with the natural energy out there, which I think is a lot of what you were saying. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And it is, it's, I think that when that happens, you have a feeling of connection to your earth, mm-hmm. you know, a sense of belonging. Yeah. I like that. For me, how I think about it is being a witch is about empowering yourself and using what what you said, like that connection to that divine source, kind of my knowledge of like how energy works, you know, within me and around me to help kind of create the life that I want to lead. Um, And I agree, like it, being a witch, you're honoring nature, you're honoring the cycles of the year, you're honoring the seasons and living in this very like energy conscious and spiritually guided life. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. And it it is, it's, it's all things, you know, Mm -hmm. and, you know, contrary to some of those definitions or, you know, what, what, what you were getting from AI and the internet, it really is more of a harmony. It's based on peacefulness it's based on love yeah and I don't think that any two people who identify as witches not like foul the exact same path I think it looks different for everybody um I want to read one person who sent in Amy because I think she highlights that that thought of like everybody's path looks a little bit different I want to read what she said So this is from Amy Nelson, and she said, there are so many different kinds of witches, and I want to honor that diversity. When I say that, say what kind of witch I am, if there are comparisons to other branches of the craft, it's not in a negative way. Every path, every culture, every person has their own culture, their own passions, and their own needs. These three elements are unique for each person, so the kind of witch that we are is equally unique. By saying what kind of witch I am, I'm not saying other kinds of witches are not legitimate. I used to identify as a Norse heathen and still do to a large degree. I still bear the title, I think, vulva, but I don't want to be limited to a certain time, space, and people group, not to mention the issues surrounding Viking culture. I'm not heathen because of Vikings. Despite the depths of my roots in that tradition, I have a passion for that certain 
certainly, but it isn't my deepest identity as a witch. Even more than the heathenry is my animism. My form of witchcraft is to be very, very earth centered and very focused on the ancestors and beings other than gods. I feel a need to ask permission of the earth when I'm gathering herbs or stones, and I believe she and her spirits answer back. I'm the kind of witch with her hands in the dirt and feet in the waters. I want to see and hear and feel all the life around me to sink into and become part of it. I long to commune with the spirits of earth to learn healing wisdom for body and soul of mankind, animals, and earth, and to know that someday I'll take my place among these spirits to share what I have learned as one of the unseen. Witchcraft is dirty, messy, beautiful, filled with joy and sorrow. It can be a very lonely path as people don't who don't understand what you are about become fearful. Some may push you away. At the same time, you will start to find people who can understand and embrace you little by little. Resting in this role is teaching me a lot about personal courage and responsibility, teaching me the power of the tongue and the will and more than I had ever known possible before. Nice. I got chills reading that and I've read it before, but it's perfect. It I love is perfect. Yeah. And I it's love so... he highlights the different path. That yeah. is because I mean there and think about it. We are all chemically different. Physically mm-hmm. have had different experiences, you know. So yeah. sense that we would interact with a vibration or an energy differently. Definitely on to different things, you know? So I think that's the beauty of it too, is that there's so much to these practices. Yeah. Oh, you could never learn it all. Yeah. You know, and again, what she's describing is just beautiful practices of just worshiping nature. And I've always said, um, nature is my church. I feel the closest to the divine when I am outside in the woods, surrounded by the trees or by a beautiful body of water, like, and just feeling that earth's energy, that is when I feel closest to spirit. Same, same. And, you know, I used to go to church and I remember going through some times in my life when I just couldn't see myself in that building and Mm -hmm. decided I was going to go in nature instead. And that's exactly what I, you feel, I think when, and, and it's the mother of all things. It it's, Mm -hmm. it is, it's literally given birth to us as our human form, you know, like this is where we get all of our, our energy, but also it's where we come from, you know? Absolutely. And I feel like, you know, not just in terms of witchcraft, craft, everybody having a different path, but I feel like anybody who has any different kind of spiritual belief, it's like everybody has the right to say, this is what feels aligned for me, right? Like my parents are very devout Catholics and they feel close to God going and sitting in church. Yep. And that is beautiful, right? Like, and they're not doing it to me. It's like, as long as you're not harming anybody, there's no harm in it. Absolutely. And you're right. I mean, it, there, there's, there are magical moments Mm -hmm. in religion and and spirituality that should be, you know, that most people feel when they're there. Yeah. I do honor that. Absolutely. Absolutely. So how would you say that you practice being a witch so similar to what we were talking about very oftentimes it's going to involve nature um and i you know i i also think that if if it's not involving nature it still is because it's going to involve those elements mm-hmm. so um i feel like my practice oftentimes is very much looks like self care so, you know, I do have daily things that I do. Um, and I think it's important to see magic and everything, you know, to sort of have that childlike awe and playfulness within your practice, you know, of, I wonder 
what I'll see if I go in the forest today and Mm -hmm. the symbols and all the correspondences come flooding in, you know, and realizing that I'm receiving some kind of a message. And I know we talked about that on the last podcast we did together, um, where you're receiving messages and signs of something bigger than you and to, to let yourself be in awe of that. Mm -hmm. Um, but I also believe that you can manifest. So I do a lot of manifestation, um, depending on what time, you know, what phase the moon is in, I try to honor that. Um, and just pay attention to the the wheel of the year, all the things we'll be talking about in this, in our podcasts, in our episodes. But I feel like that is um, grounding. I feel like it helps me to have structure to my practice. Um, I love working with other people who have similar, but very different beliefs than I do so that I can learn and, you know. I, I just feel like it's the kind of thing where if I haven't done anything, any ritual or anything that feels like I'm grounded in the craft, I start to feel a little bit unwell, <laughs> you know, I, mm-hmm. I kind of feel off and, you know, like I haven't done anything for myself lately. And and that, that is, I, I feel like the craft is something that I do for myself. It's a gift that mm-hmm. I give yeah and I love Meg and I have like a coven of two (laughs) (laughs) and I love it because I feel like you have a lot of like different knowledge that I don't have so it's like you're kind of like sharing some of the things that you've learned along the way and just kind of helping like expand my own like beliefs and practices and stuff like that and um Meg has made uh hexen spiegels i can say it finally which are just these little like mirror charms that is like a protection kind of like protecting energy like sending it back to the person you know that you're receiving it from and let me tell you guys (laughs) i wore it one time to walmart because i had to go at like two o'clock in the afternoon like the entire parking lot is full and i walked in and out of walmart so regulated (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Whereas like typically I, because I'm an empath, I'm really sensitive to energy and there's just a lot going on at Walmart at two o'clock in the afternoon um, <laughs> that I was like, man, this works. <laughs> oh, that's great. And yeah. I learned so much from you, Brittany. I mean, I love our time together when, um, you know, we sh- were able to sit down and, you know, kind of create, co-create things yeah. and forage and yeah really, I've learned so much from you as well. And yeah, yeah. Where Don, your, your, your witchy garb. Yeah. (laughs) Eagle or, you know, definitely your pentagram. I love it. Yeah. For me, I, I love the tools of witchcraft and the practices and like the, like the, like you said, kind of like almost playing with energy. Like when you're crafting a spell, it just puts me into this very like magical vibration. And it's like exciting and enchanting. And to me, I do have the belief that I could probably manifest all of these things without the tools, but the tools just enhance the experience for me. It makes it more fun. It gives me like focal objects to kind of like channel my energy into, or some of the tools will help kind of align your energy, you know, based on like what, what they're kind of vibrating at. So absolutely, I'm the type of person I'm like, I don't think the tools are a hundred percent necessary. I just enjoy using them. Agreed. And, and I, I feel like on that note, you know, the representation and I almost bring it back to like tarot, but like, you know, the pen pentacles and the cups or the, you know, the cauldron. Yeah. Everything kind of has a symbolic meaning so that to me it's intention. And if I believe that my wine glass is the chalice or my, my candle is the fire, you Mm -hmm. know, it doesn't take a lot to recreate those tools, you yeah. know, 
a wand can just be your finger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> something some elaborate thing although surrounding yourself with those things like you said can be fun and it can help you to experiment with different tools and Mm -hmm. always an important process to learn what works for me Mm -hmm. yeah yeah definitely So another person sent us an email. Her name's Kat P. And she said, for me, being a witch means I've fully embraced my true and authentic self, which I love that. I agree with that wholeheartedly. My practice is mostly focused on tuning inward, manifesting a better version of myself, and I'm forever a work in progress. In turn, this changes my perspective of my environment and the energetic field that surrounds me. There's always inner work to be done, always something more we can learn. I have a connection with nature and plant spirits. I leave offerings for my ancestors, house, land spirits. One of my favorite simple daily practices is enchanting my coffee. I'm interested in many different forms of divination. I'm attuned in Reiki, although I haven't had the opportunity to offer professional services to the community yet. Reiki has changed everything for me. Each attunement brought major shifts in my life and my consciousness for the better. I love it. That's, I agree wholeheartedly with all of that. To me, it's like so much of being a person who wants to consciously manifest your life has to do with your internal work of just like coming in, meeting your shadows, helping those, those parts of yourself heal so that you can align with that better version and with your most authentic self. So I'm here for all of that. And Meg and I are both Reiki masters. So we definitely understand and value the power of Reiki for sure. Absolutely. And yeah. And I mean, you know, I think about crossover too, because we're both therapists as well. Mm-hmm. And Carl Young, like, like mm-hmm. shadow work, you know, there yeah. was there wasn't any part of his work that didn't require a person to do that in a reflection, you know, something's activated within me and it's block. It can really block our energy or distort it, you know, and yeah. order to be your most authentic highest version of you, then you, you do have to take some time to say what's going on. What, what yeah. am I feeling this way? And how do I, align myself so that I can reach my greatest good and, and do good for other people. Yeah. So it is, there's a lot of crossover there for Reiki and therapy. And yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just doing the work for sure. Definitely. So this is an area I'm going to be honest. I don't know a tremendous about amount about, but what do you think about witches who like will hex or use kind of like, I'm not sure what the right term is, darker forms of magic or how would you describe it? So, yeah, I, I, I mean, it's, I, I guess it, in my mind, there, there are darker witches and I don't know that they're all bad, you know, yeah, is, I agree baneful magic baneful there we go and i to me i i don't choose to practice that because it is kind of bordering on something that's a little bit more dark and you know the the rule the the standard rule the power of 3 the power of 10 you know if you put something negative into the world it'll come back to you my I guess the way I conceptualized baneful magic that might not necessarily be dark is something where you're not necessarily, you're trying to change something. You're trying to say, okay, I want to prevent this person from having a miscarriage, but you know, for instance, but which is a lovely, beautiful thing to do for somebody you love or a friend, you know, that you care about, obviously, but it's also kind of omits the, is that what's meant to be though? Mm -hmm. And no, I think we can kind of get into something where we might prevent a miscarriage when really in nature's way that might have actually been 
a better outcome for the mom or for the, 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 the newborns, you know, that something wasn't right. So I do think I like to stay more on the, the whiter side or the lighter side of magic in terms of not necessarily trying to orchestrate an outcome that's specific and may not be for the greatest good. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if that makes sense, but yeah, no, I think it does make sense. And I mean, I think I agree with you. Like, like what I said before is I believe like witchcraft is about empowerment. And so how people choose to empower themselves may look different than what I feel comfortable doing to empower myself, but I'm not going to judge somebody, right? Like is again, as long as you're not like crying, hurt somebody, right? I have no judgments of like how you choose to kind of direct your energy, but I agree with you. I do believe like what we put out comes back to us with like the world is our mirror reflection, right? And so the mirror I want to look into is one of love and light and peace and abundance and prosperity and, you know, good things, not just for me, but for, for everybody out there, you know? So I do kind of align more with the lighter side but I just like what we were talking about like doing shadow work like there might be some like kind of dark negative connotations with your shadow but we need our shadow and we need to embrace our shadows and so I don't think that kind of like existing in a darker space is necessarily a negative thing it just kind of has some negative connotations Absolutely. I agree. And I, I, I absolutely feel the same way. If, if you're using magic in a way that might hex or hurt someone, you know, you're really bordering on something that might not serve you. It's, it's kind yeah. of a darker place. And like, if you do the shadow work, you do tend to come back into the light and you do kind of have that ability to manifest for yourself a better feeling, a better vibration. Mm -hmm. And, you know, at the end of the day, I mean, you talked about the Hex and Spiegels. I feel like that using a, a mirror to reflect the light that you want into the world is better than putting yourself in a position where you're absorbing something, yeah. you know, so... I do for sure really think that, you know, and again, there's folks who practice more baneful magic and do it successfully and they're, they're fine. It, you know, they appear to be, you know, very healthy and okay. So I, I don't judge that, but if I heard about someone, you know, trying to purposely hurt someone, I wouldn't, that yeah. I, I would want to lift them up a little bit and, and you know, hope that they, find their authentic self for sure yeah and if there's anybody who's out there listening and you do kind of align more with like what meg was saying of baneful magic and want to share that perspective with us i would love to hear from you and just kind of like i said it's not something i know a tremendous amount about the things i know about are the things that just speak to me and so if it's like something resonates with me i investigate it more or i lean into it more and so the other things i just i don't have as not uh, as much information about exactly yeah just because we're not drawn to that doesn't mean that it is bad it's wrong yeah and that and that probably is some some of the source of the original conversation we had about the the imagery and the stereotypes of mm -hmm. what a yeah oh yeah. yeah yeah I mean I think I'm glad that we're doing this because I feel like there's a lot of misconceptions out there about what it means to be a witch you know people who are not educated will you know believe like witches are worshiping the devil and I think for the majority of people who identify as being a witch they don't even believe in the devil right. you know <laughs> so exactly so no, I think there's there's dark and there's light you know but definitely there isn't you know some kind of subscription to we're going to make a contract or a pact with something right. 
diabolical or evil yeah 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 we're not you know summoning demons or anything like that we may be trying to connect with our ancestors or spirit guides for me i like to connect with angels which i don't believe christians get to (laughs) hold the monopoly on angels i believe that they are for everybody you know so i i think that um there's there's a lot more to it than what is kind of portrayed and has been portrayed for the last, you know, <laughs> hundreds and hundreds of years, unfortunately. Absolutely. Agreed. And I just want to talk briefly about a book that I've been reading. It's called Heal the Witch Wound by Celeste Larson. And I will link that in the show notes for you guys, but it's really interesting. And it talks about kind of the history of, you know, um, which is being persecuted and all of that. And, you know, signs that you might have a witch wound and, you know, so it's like things like hiding your practices and your interests out of fear of being judged. So like being in the broom closet, that has been, I know that we've both had that experience before. And even just as recently as a couple of weeks ago, I had people coming into my house when I wasn't going to be here. And I had before, like I had a, a book on witchcraft, like on display in my bookshelf out in my living room. And I took it down because I was worried about people seeing that and like judging me for that. So I'm like, I very much still do have that witch wound. Um, you know, and it's not like me identifying saying I identify as a witch is not something I've ever actually said in front of my parents before. Yeah, you know? absolutely. That and I, yeah, I share in that. You know, um, it's interesting because we are both therapists. We both, you know, are licensed professionals and want so much to be able to do both to be able to have an all-inclusive more authentic approach to our lives and be very open about that our spirituality not that i would ever bring any any form of religion into therapy or really vice versa but it is that i I am a whole person and it it does seem there have been times when i have been fear-based about would that be accepted? Mm -hmm. Would that hurt me somehow if people realize that I'm a practicing witch and I'm a therapist, you know, I mean, definitely had that. And even, I mean, I'm very open in my home, but you're right. I have to consider who's coming into my home because not everybody feels comfortable with the idea of a witch, you Mm -hmm. know? trying to figure out how to explain something so that it doesn't necessarily feel threatening to someone, you know, that, that stereotype it's, it is interesting to, to find myself as I've evolved to be more open about it. Yeah. And, you know, my family is really embraced it and they're very welcoming with it, but and I celebrate different holidays. I celebrate everything, you know, I mm-hmm. have beliefs, but they definitely, I, you know, they got into the point where they're like, Hey, you know, happy Samhain. <laughs> 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 oh, that, you know, I'm celebrating, um, based on those hol- high holidays as well. And yeah, that's good for sure. Yeah. I feel like my parents are coming along too. Um, when I was, a teenager I had like secretly bought Silver Raven Wolf's like teen witch book and I had it hidden and my mom found it and she was like what is this <laughs> and I was 13 I didn't have the words to explain it to her like that it wasn't evil or bad I just tried I tried but like I wasn't like I wasn't able to explain it well enough but my mom will now say things like we gotta put that out to the universe <laughs> you know or like um my sister's kind of gotten her into like noticing signs like repeating numbers and you know she'll in the the family group chat she'll be like you know I keep seeing three 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 what does that mean you know so my parents have come a long way and kind of expanding from like the very traditional 
you know, Catholic dogmatic point of view to like being a little bit more accepting that there is more out there and it's okay. And it's not evil or anything like that. I, I love that. That's great. Mom's looking for numerology. <laughs> she is right. Well, and I mean, even we did summer, we did a summer solstice, you mm-hmm. know, ritual or kind of spell here, um, you know, where we like, we, we release by burning things and then we planted new seeds and my mom participated in that, you know? So yeah. It was, yeah. It yeah. was yeah, everybody just sort of opening up and allowing that side of themselves to yeah. to hold. Yeah. And I just, you know, something as I was like preparing for this, something that keeps coming back to me is like, Christians don't feel ashamed to say that they've prayed about something. Sure. So why should witches feel ashamed to say, I cast a spell, right? right. Like to me, it's not this- really all that much different. We just maybe have some more tools and some more steps involved. <laughs> that are based in nature. Right. Us. I mean, we're not using anything that is not necessarily already occurring, you yeah. know, scary. Um, yeah. But we do. We practice very much the same within our meditations or manifesting things that's that's prayer yeah wow rituals i mean there's not a religion out there that doesn't have a ritual exactly yeah so that is going to be the end of our first episode on what it means to be a witch and Tomorrow we will be back with um, an episode where we're going to talk about kind of working with energy and following the cycles. So hopefully you guys will join us for day two. Thanks everyone. Bye. Bye. (laughs) Thank you so much for being here. If you have a strange story you want to share with us, email us at seekerandskeptic at gmail.com. We look forward to talking to you soon. 